Well, thank you, Madam Chair, and thanks to all of you for your hard work. And I want to start by thanking you for the service that you're giving to this great state. We all know that there is nothing more important in a civilized society and democracy and education of our children. Uh, we're doing a much better job in Vermont than we are giving credit for. And I want to thank you for your willingness to help us improve the system and make it even better. Um, and I want to also say, we want to work with you. And uh, I know we haven't had an opportunity to meet yet. I apologize for that. It's been a little hectic. We've got a lot of balls in the air, uh, a lot of challenges. But uh, we have an opportunity to take what is a great education system and make it even better. And we're going to rely on you to help us do that. So I'd love to see a collaboration uh, between my administration and your work and the legislature so that you can actually get some tough things done. Just generally speaking, if we can go there for a minute, you know, I spend a lot of time out speaking with Vermonters of all walks of life, and uh, I can't, I, I'm, I'm uh, surprised by the number of employers that I talk to in the state uh, who, when I go in and say, hey, you know, uh, I was elected governor at a time when Vermonters on average are making the same money they were making 10 years ago, but their expenses have gone up, and that's our challenge together, not so much unemployment in the state, fortunately. Not to say this is not a problem, but it's not a problem that many of my colleagues are facing with double-digit numbers. We're down to roughly 5.4 percent. We hope it stays there, or goes lower. Uh, but under a plan, and so many of them say to me, you know, uh, we have jobs, Governor. We've got jobs. We just can't find enough Vermonters who are trained to do the jobs that we have in the 21st century. And they pay well, and they have good benefits, and we need your help uh, in getting us those employees. So that's our job to do, is to, is to close the gap, among other things, to close the gap between our employers who have jobs and uh, our employees who, uh, I'm sorry, I should say our Vermonters who want jobs and our employees who have the work to do. Uh, Judy just came in, and I think, uh, you know, often, Senator Sears calls Bennington the Forgotten Kingdom. Uh, I know Steve Morse and I share the view from Wingman County that we're a little bit forgotten there when I go up to the Kingdom. Uh, they feel a little bit forgotten. Uh, if I go up to Franklin County, they sometimes feel a little bit excluded from the hub of what happens here in Chittenden County. Uh, and Rutland, where I'll be later today, certainly feels the pressure and feels a little bit neglected. And, Frankly, so does Windsor County. So we have this phenomenon where uh, we have a lot of people feeling left out, but they have the same problems. And this is even true in Bennington County. I was uh, this week down at uh, one of your great employers, uh, Mac Moldy, who echoed the same concerns that uh, I hear from the employers in other parts of the state. Uh, so we've got a job to do together. So the question is, how do we do it? And I just want to throw out a few thoughts, and then I'd love to hear your thoughts, uh, Madam Chair, and to the rest of the board members about how we can collaborate to take action in this legislative session that's going to make a difference. Um, first, uh, I had a very encouraging conversation yesterday with Secretary Duncan. And uh, he called me to say what he read a little bit about in the press, but it was he reaching out to us. Uh, I made clear, as soon as I was elected governor, I actually had conversations with uh, Artie Duncan about No Child Left Behind. You know my concerns with it. I know your concerns with it. I think we share the same concerns, which is we want standards. We want measurement process. But there are two things that are killing Vermont's educational process with No Child Left Behind. Small, I should say, students that have high schools or schools that have a uh, particularly high level of low-income students or English as a second language students uh, are finding that we're having to fail very good principles because of a law that doesn't measure student progress adequately. So he called to say, listen, Governor, you've talked to me about this uh, so many times that uh, I was working with him to, in the rewrite process for child left behind to say that it's, we are accepting the fact that No Child Left Behind isn't going to be reauthorized by this Congress. And therefore, uh, we're going to use 
abuse the power of the Obama administration to grant waivers uh, from the areas of No Child Left Behind that you governors feel uh, aren't working for them, as long as they're not reducing standards for women. So I said to him that we would work together with you to get a package down there within the next 20 days uh, that would give Vermont a waiver from the areas of No Child Left Behind that we feel are hurting our schools and hurting our ability to deliver quality education. The two areas that, that I think we agree on, I hope we do on it, uh, is uh, the first waiver that I think we should request is to ensure that we are held to the 2009 levels for testing. In other words, that we make that the bar by which we do not have to exceed, uh, which would allow us to stop this crazy circle where we're moving good people, good educators out of schools because we're measuring, we're using a measurement system that isn't, doesn't reflect the process of those individual kids in the classroom at the school. Uh, there are other areas I think where we can work together. Uh, clearly, uh, the, coming up with a standardized measurement system that better suits Vermont is what we should be doing. It seems to me that, uh, and I know that uh, the commissioner agrees with me on some of this, or most of this, I believe, uh, that we should be looking at, obviously, the kneecap, a portfolio system that allows us to kneecap uh, grade of the that a student receives in school should be part of our measurement system for those that don't do well on standardized tests but may well be doing very well in school. And the third piece being some capstone, some individual ability to uh, demonstrate skill beyond the standardized test and to back up that assessment system. So let me be clear. We don't want to get rid of our assessment system and simply say, we trust what's happening and we don't need to measure the progress of our students. We want a good, a better system to measure their progress. And that system should be one that measures the individual student's progress within a classroom as opposed to having to measure all 10 students' progress as a block if it's hypothetically a 10-person classroom. So I think we're agreed on that. Uh, let's work together as quickly as we can to get the secretary the information he needs to make Vermont one of the first states that gets the waivers from No Child Left Behind to make sense of a system that I think is fair. <clears throat> um, a few other thoughts. Uh, I know you've worked hard on the question of consolidation, uh, making schools uh, more affordable for taxpayers. We're with you on wanting to achieve affordability in light of a dwindling student population. I think the best potential for us to uh, achieve those goals is around the questions, the number of superintendencies that we have in the state. And all I can tell you is the devil tends to be in the details, but we would like to work together with you so that in January we can go out with a package that uh, at least tries to figure out how we can allow communities at the local level make choices that would save them money uh, by finding efficiencies in the administrative sector. I think that's where the savings should come from first. And I think we can get there. Now the Secretary has said that in order to do that, uh, one of the things that's holding us back is the communities that lose their current school choice that they already have in place if they consolidate. And I think we can find a pretty creative way to deal with that if we try. That's simply grandfathering those communities that have uh, the choice that they've had for years and uh, considering an approach that applies public school choice uh, to a broader sector of our schools uh, with the possibility of Combining that with the emphasis I know you've been talking about of having schools that specialize in particular sectors of learning. The biggest challenge we have, we know, is STEM, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. That's where we need to drive students. And when I talk to students today, I tell them that. Listen, if you want to get a piece of the economic engine that's going to drive your future, uh, it's science, it's math, it's engineering, it's technology. You get in those areas, and you're going to win. You're going to make a great living. You've got a great future. 
but we've got to be able to give them the choices to allow them to do that. What else would help? I think we want to work with you aggressively on what I know you've been focusing on, which is how do we get kids who excel in those areas or other areas uh, the college credit that they should deserve by getting that work done within their existing schools. We want to work with you on that. Uh, finally, as you know, and I've said this before, I believe that if you can teach, teach someone how to read, we can teach anyone how to read. And I'm living proof of that. I'm sure I'm not the only living proof of that in the state of Vermont. But as a kid who learns differently, and who wouldn't be governor had it not been for being taught how to read in a different setting than a classroom, uh, I can tell you that uh, we can do great things for each individual student if we have the system that ensures that we understand their learning style early and teach to it. So in that spirit, that's the system we should have in Vermont. Every student learns to their potential. That means, in my judgment, that we do a few things that perhaps we're not doing universally right now. The first is, by fourth grade, a simple standard should be that every student reads at a fourth grade level. We should put the mechanism in place to make sure that happens. If you can't read at a fourth grade level by fourth grade, the chances of you learning how to read and growing up and being governor or whatever you want to do in life uh, is certainly unlikely. There aren't many, very many governors serving in Vermont or in America uh, historically who can't read. And there aren't very many people who are going to succeed in this workforce uh, without a higher education. So we know we've got to raise the number of people that we get into higher education to do that. We've got to succeed early. We want to work with you on early child education, zero to three, as well as having kids prepared to learn uh, pre-K when they go into the classroom doors at first grade or kindergarten. Uh, second, it seems to me imperative that we do more work in ensuring that by eighth grade, every student has been introduced to people who work in jobs, whether it's welding, uh, farming, uh, brain surgery, uh, other professions where people come into the classroom, talk about what they do, why they do it, how they get it done, and what level of education they had to have had to achieve those professions. And finally, it would seem to me reasonable that we work with you to ensure that by senior year in high school, every student in Vermont has participated in an internship, a cooperative, a whatever you want to call it, where they have worked in a profession that they care about pursuing uh, in the local community to get a better sense of what it means to do a particular job, particular professions, the rewards, the challenges, and so forth. The gap there has always been, well, good idea, but it's tough to coordinate. It takes a lot of resources to find those internships that actually work. And we'd like to work with you to see if we could use our AmeriCorps model to use those among college graduates who are up here doing good things for the community to match the Chamber of Commerce, the business community, with the superintendencies, with the principal's office, and with the teachers to set up real, live, challenging internships within each community of Vermont so that every high school student can have this experience. As we know, some schools are doing it now, others are not. That's something that seems to me we should standardize and give, help creatively to find cheap resources to coordinate those activities. So, uh, there's a few thoughts about the educational future for Vermont. Uh, I am convinced that Vermont must be the education state to get the jobs, to lift the incomes, to be successful in this next century. If you go out and talk to employers, they'll agree with you. Uh, the days when you can succeed in Vermont uh, without an education are over. And we know that while uh, not everyone's going to go to college, uh, we have a responsibility to make sure that every student gets the education that they need, the knowledge that they need to succeed. That may be actual school for some, it may mean other opportunities for others, but by breaking down the silos, uh, shaking up the system a little bit, and actually emphasizing every student's individual learning style and making sure that we reach their potential, uh, I think we've got a bright future of making our schools even better. So there's a few thoughts off the top of my head. I might have forgot a few, but I'll ramble on and